Carolyn Rice, School Board Chair. This meeting of the School Board of the City of Virginia Beach is hereby called to order at 6 o'clock p.m. on this 12th day of May 2020. Due to Governor Northam's Stay at Home Executive Order 55 related to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, it's determined that holding a school board meeting in person would pose a real and substantial threat to public health and safety. Accordingly, pursuant to and in compliance with the provisions outlined in school board resolution of April 7, 2020, this school board meeting will be conducted electronically with school board members participating remotely by telephone or on an online platform. The school administration building remains closed. However, this meeting is being streamed live on vbschools.com as well as on VBTV channel 47 and recorded for archival purposes. Due to the electronic nature of this meeting, school board members and staff must identify themselves verbally before speaking. And before I ask for the clerk to conduct a roll call, I do wanna welcome any and all citizens joining us this evening. So with that, Madam Clerk, um, please conduct a roll call of school board members. Thank you. We will begin with in alphabetical order with Mrs. Anderson. Beverly Anderson is present. Mr. Edwards. Dan Edwards is present. Ms. Felton. Sharon Felton is present. Mrs. Holtz. I'll return. Mrs. Hughes. Laura Hughes is present. Ms. Manning. Victoria Manning present. Mrs. Melnick. Kimberly Melnick is present. Mrs. Owens. Jessica Owens present. Ms. Riggs. Renee Riggs present. Ms. Rye. Carolyn Rye present. Ms. Weems. Carolyn Weems present. And our superintendent, Mr. S uh, Dr. Spence, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, Dr. Spence is present. Thank you, Madam Chair. It appears we have a quorum. I'll call one more time, Ms. Holtz. So I saw, I see that we have 10 board members present with our superintendent. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Okay, all votes will be recorded in the minutes of the meeting, of this meeting. And should a school board member join the meeting after the roll call or leave the meeting before adjournment, the school board member is asked to verbally state so. Now I ask everyone present and listening to please join me in observing a moment of silence. Thank you. And now I ask my colleagues to join me and stand as you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And with that, um, I welcome Dr. Spence and we look forward to hearing your report, agenda item number three. Thank you and good evening, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board. Here are just a few items of interest for you and our families to know this evening. Last week was Teacher Appreciation Week and I encourage everyone to search the hashtag love educators on social media to see all the wonderful ways our community thanked our 5,000 BB schools teachers and remembered other teachers who had made all the difference in their lives. As the week ended, I had the pleasure of announcing that Daniel Ramos Jr., who teaches heating, ventilation, and air conditioning at the Virginia Beach Technical Career Education Center, is the 2021 Virginia Beach City Public Schools Citywide Teacher of the Year. Mr. Ramos attended the Tech Center and graduated from Tallwood High School, worked in the HVAC industry for a little while and brought those skills back to the Tech Center where he took the teaching position made available when his former instructor retired. 
He's the perfect example of how we grow our own. And during the past seven years at the Tech Center, he has updated the HVAC lab, completed a third party accreditation through HVAC Excellence, and led his students to championships at the Skills USA District HVAC competition every single year. He's particularly proud of his class's participation in the house building program for the Virginia Beach Education Foundation, which helps to support BBCPS teachers and their special projects. He will be honored officially on what is tentatively November the 12th during the annual Teacher of the Year dinner hosted by the Virginia Beach Education Foundation and scheduled to be held at the West in Town Center. We also celebrated National School Nurses Day last week and here in Virginia Beach, we have 90 school nurses who play an integral role, integral role in the health of our students. Not only are they the first line of help and comfort when students aren't fe feeling well, but they care for the entire school population, bringing together our families, medical providers, and the community. They also serve to encourage and improve wellness and help make Virginia Beach a healthier place for children and families to learn and grow, especially during this crisis. We want to give a big shout out to Trantwood Elementary School's Pam Belote for being selected as the Virginia Beach 2020 School Nurse of the Year. So congratulations, Mrs. Belote. In other news, to assist with access to resources and lessons, VB Schools has deployed equipment to extend Wi-Fi capability for school issued devices into school parking lots. At Bayside High School, Cook Elementary, College Park Elementary, Corporate Landing Middle, Creeds Elementary, Diamond Springs Elementary, Green Run Elementary, and Green Run High School, Kellum High School, Kempsville High School, Donation School, SeaTac Elementary, and Virginia Beach Middle School. There are some guidelines that we're asking our students and families to continue to follow, including adhering to appropriate social distancing guidelines. And we're asking folks to please park in designated parking spaces and not be in our lots after dark. All of this information, of course, is posted on our website at vbschools.com slash COVID-19. And as a reminder, if students are unable to connect to the Wi-Fi network using school issued devices, we ask them to please contact the Department of Technology Customer Support Center at 757-263-1111. Some of our food distribution sites have now added dinner to the bagged breakfast and lunch already being offered. These three meals are now available at selected schools Monday through Friday only. So we'd ask our community to please see our website for the complete list of schools offering these meals. Again, my thanks to our food services folks for providing tens of thousands of healthy meals to our families every week since this extended closure began. And we're proud to offer this addition to that service moving forward. And finally, we are hosting another Parent Connection virtual workshop this Thursday at 5 p.m. The topic will be staying sane while teaching your own children. The event is first come, first serve with a capacity of 500 participants. And parents and community members can find the Zoom link and password on our website. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. This concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Spence. A lot of wonderful news. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, the school board will now hear comments from citizens and delegations on agenda items who signed up with our clerk prior to the meeting. Please keep in mind the school board invites the public to also submit comments through our group email account, which can be found on our website. Madam Clerk, are there any speakers this evening? No, ma'am, there are no speakers. All right, thank you. Uh, next order of business approval of our April 28th, 2020 minutes from our electronic school board meeting. Uh, are there any modifications to these minutes? Okay, hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Renee Riggs. Thank you, and a second? Dottie Holt, second. Ah. Madam Clerk, would you please um, proceed with the verbal vote? Uh, and, and, and I ask, well, or, or you will ask them what to do. Please proceed. <laughs> Certainly. Thank you, Madam Chair. School board members are asked to indicate their vote with their name, followed by yes, no, or abstain with the reason for the abstention. We'll begin with Mrs. Anderson. Beverly Anderson, yes. Mr. Edwards. Dan Edwards, yes. Mrs. Felton. Sharon Felton, yes. Mrs. Holtz. Mrs. Holtz. Dorothy Holtz, yes. Mrs. Hughes. Laura Hughes, yes. 
Mrs. Manning. Victoria Manning, yes. Mrs. Melnick. Kimberly Melnick, yes. Ms. Owens. Jessica Owens, yes. Ms. Riggs. Trinace Riggs, yes. Mrs. Rye. Carolyn Rye, yes. Mrs. Weems. Carolyn Weems, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the vote is 11 to zero, unanimous approval of the minutes. Thank you. Uh, so the minutes of the April 28th, 2020 electronic school board meeting are hereby approved. Next order of business, adoption of the agenda. Be uh, before I ask for any additional mo mo modifications, I do want to note uh, that we add to section, to action, uh, item D, superintendent summative evaluation process, fiscal year 20. And uh, also at the, uh, because a colleague remind us, reminded us this evening as we were going live, uh, a section for committee reports, uh, given that a few have met in the past week or so, and that would be um, after information, Madam Chair, Madam Clerk, excuse me. Any other uh, adjustments or additions to the agenda? Okay, hearing none. Um, um, I have my hand raised. This is Victoria I, Manning. I apologize. Yes, Mrs. Manning. Um, so I did not receive the addition to the agenda to review. Um, I, I saw it in my email this morning, but I have not had a chance to review it and I don't feel comfortable for it going to action. Um, I would be fine with it going for information since I've not been able to review it. Uh, would that be okay? Can you tell me what you're speaking of? You said that you were adding an action item to the agenda for the superintendents. Right, um, and, and you were, it, Mrs. Our clerks uh, sent out the SharePoint notice last night and a governance committee member was um, delegated the, the uh, task of calling you. Correct, and I spoke with them, but I have not been able to review the document uh, other than just scanning it. I was working today and I just did not have a chance to do it. I don't think it's, uh, proper procedure to put an action on it, um, an item on action when it's only been received the same day by board members. Um, so I would appreciate it if we could just put it on for information um, so that I do have some time to review it. Well, well to qualify, and um, it was received yesterday, and I, I, I understand you've stated your circumstance, but uh, at this point, it, it's it was sent yesterday. It was time. it was sent yesterday. I did not receive it until today. I don't. I did. I wasn't checking my email last night, um, so I would appreciate it. Um, I mean, it's a substantial document that references bylaws and applicable laws and policies that I would like to have time to review. It's a page and a half document. I've, my inclination is still to keep it as an action item at this point. Uh, Miss, is Madam Clerk or Miss Linetti, anybody else? This is Mrs. Linetti. I think it's open for discussion. You have a, um, you're asking an amendment, so I think it's appropriate mm -hmm. they can discuss it, though I'm not sure we've had an actual motion to uh, adopt the, or amend the agenda. So the motion on the floor is to the, to a, adopt the amended agenda. Can we have a second to that first? I don't have a motion. I'm sorry, I don't have a motion yet. Okay, I motion that we um, add, add that item to the agenda. Is there a second? I'm sorry, this is Mrs. Linetti. I just wanna clarify, you're adding action item 7D at, in addition to committee reports after information items, correct? Correct. correct. I second the motion. Beverly Anderson. Right now, is there further discussion? Mrs. Manning has raised an issue. So I assume we proceed with this vote. Adam, I have my, my I have hand is raised as well. Laura Hughes uh -huh. and Carolyn Weems have their hands raised. Okay, Mrs. Hughes. 
Um, I agree with Ms. Manning, and I spoke with you earlier, and you know, I understand Ms. Manning is saying today and you're saying yesterday, but we received this 24 hours before the meeting, and that is the span of a day. And I don't think it's an emergency to vote on this tonight. I think we should have it on information. We should have time to discuss it, digest it, and then vote on it at a later point. It's not an emergency to do it tonight. And I think it's entirely inappropriate to just put it on there and try to rush it. Mrs. Weems. Um, yes, Ms. Rye, thank you. And, I, and as you know, I was on the governance committee and, and wanted to kind of kind of wait to do this, but, but kind of got outvoted. But my question is, if we um, put this on information, will we, it seems like we'll still be able to discuss it, vote on it in two weeks and meet the June 30th deadline. Is that correct? And if so, I think that it's very appropriate for us to put it on information tonight. Nope. Well, who else has a... <clears throat> It's, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, it's um, Jessica Owens, Beverly Anderson, Dan Edwards. This is Jessica Owens. I think Ms. Weems may have um, kind of asked uh, part of my question. I was trying to find out what, where we were in terms of the deadline for um, this and when the, the next uh, evaluation uh, was going to be uh, next phase of evaluation for the superintendent uh, is planning to be started so that we had a clear idea of when the policy would need to be in place by. I appreciate the question. Uh, perhaps I can answer that much and we'll get to our next guest or, or participant. There is a timeline associated with, with this process and, and one of the next orders of business would be the next meeting uh, according to this proposal, um, so I can answer the, and and we would want we would want to offer the school board members a chance to begin now the, the process. You know the, what what lies in the hands of the school board members and and further instruction about that. So to, in that regard, since we really are dealing with the middle of June, and this gets into the document itself. I want to get don't want to get too much into the weeds now, but there is somewhat of a timeline line issue. I'll just leave it at that for now and allow Mr. Is it Mr. Edwards next? No, no, Madam Chair, Beverly Anderson, then Dan Edwards. Okay, I'll scroll back up. Mrs. Anderson. Thank you. Um, as I understood it, um, each governance committee member was supposed to contact uh other school board members to go over this with them um i know i, I had the the job of, of i mean i i called um Ms. holt and we discussed it and talked it over um there isn't really that much to digest it's a very simple document and it has to do with the process as you explained and if we don't vote on this tonight um you know we sorry we don't vote on this tonight we you know we will be behind on the timeline that this document uh allows us to have so um i think we can discuss it tonight um there's plenty of time for discussion on it um during the action part of the agenda and um so i you know i don't quite understand what the, what the holdup is why people can't figure out how you know how they might want to vote on this and and you know and look at the document as we're going over it and figure out what it's about we can we can discuss it during action obviously so i i think we should keep it on the agenda for action tonight and move forward okay thank you mr edwards <laughs> This so is Dan Edwards, and uh, the I don't see in the next two weeks a big differential be, between the current process and the new process as delineated in the document. Uh, I would 
and and I I do think it is a substantial, uh, important change, and I am willing to uh, support putting it on information uh, because I I don't I think uh, we need to structure our next meeting so that we voted on this uh, early on. I don't know if there's anything in the next meeting that would require formal action, but obviously this would need to be approved in advance of that. But, uh, and I'm not even sure, I, it really the, the first meeting in June is when it all comes together. Um, but I, I think we ought to go ahead and uh, have a robust discussion tonight on information and take action in two weeks, unless, unless somebody else, uh, particularly those in the governance committee who worked hard putting this together, can flag something that actually would uh, obstruct the new process in the next two weeks. But I, I think the old process is uh we'll, we'll have us in an adequate position two weeks from now thank you uh madam chair um okay so mrs owens put her hand down um mrs anderson mrs anderson sorry um, i just didn't take my hand down that's all oh okay uh, it's just me now mrs melnick um, I would just like to remind the board that the governance committee put a lot of time into this. Uh, it was a pretty hefty meeting um, with a lot of discussion, followed by phone calls to each individual board members with the material coming out. My concern is that, um, I just wanna remind the board that last year we, we ran out of time and uh, we never um, submitted the documentation properly. And so I'm asking that we move forward and that we um, um, and that we uh, get rolling on this with the new procedure. Mrs. Riggs. Thank you, Mrs. Melnick. Mrs. Riggs. Sorry, I did, I did not unmute myself. Um, I know that you had um, Diane send out, I think it was the, the first Friday in May, the- um, The instrument. The evaluation instrument. So we know that it was coming up and we had that to look at. I, I can't remember, cause I'm, I'm not pulling up the email right now, but- um, and there was a um, on the calendar, you know, uh, information that we were meeting and that um, the evaluation needed to come up. So I'm not sure if that any of that came up, but we knew the evaluation was coming up. I think that we need to move on with this. I don't mind. Um, we can talk about it tonight, but this is something that um, comes every year. We're also putting it off another week because of it. We've said it should be at 15th, but because of uh, the time uh, that has happened during the, this coronavirus, we decided to give it another week um, extra this year. But there really isn't anything that changes anything except for the final vote and we need to move on because we didn't last year we didn't even come up with one so we were trying to get to a point where we hopefully could have something that would go along with everyone and consensus is basic government 101 so this is something that uh, i think we should need should move on with Thank you, Mrs. Felton, your hands up and you haven't spoken yet. So please proceed. Good evening and thank you for this time. Um, Ms. Edwards mentioned that it is a new process. It is something that we have been talking about and doing and my concern, which it has been touched on a little bit, the timeline, uh, I'm concerned about that as well. Uh, but I would like to, if she could speak to Ms. Weems, she said she was voted down. And being that she is on the governance committee, I would like to hear her concerns 
about why she was voted in and why she didn't want to go, go forward with it. I just, I'd just i like to hear her expound on it just a little bit more. I, I feel we're getting bogged down in this. Let me just say this. I don't recall a specific committee discussion about delaying this, this discussion tonight. So I will say that much, but if, if any, but I certainly will, Mrs. Weems is free to weigh in. Thank you, Ms. Felton. Thank you, um, Ms. Rye. Yes, I thought it was um, too quick to make such a philosophical change. This is a, a big change in the way we evaluate from averaging scores and individual um, evaluations to a consensus model. So it is a it is a quite big philosophical change. I thought to push it through for this time around was quick. I, I said that several times. It's fine that that my other four colleagues did not agree. But tonight, I think to to put this on just getting it yesterday for some of the colleagues who may are who are not on the governance committee, have not had time to review it, have not had time to um mull it over. There is no reason why we can't put it on information and vote on two weeks. Like one colleague said, Dr. Spence is, you know, turning his his part in a little bit late because of extenuating circ circumstances with the pandemic. Um, since we can still meet our deadline, final deadline of final evaluation, June 30th, I think that if one or two or three or several board members are not comfortable with voting on it tonight, I think it's very appropriate to discuss it tonight. Like I said, it is a complete change of the way we have ev been evaluating for the last 18 years I've been on this board. So I think that since it is changing quite a bit, that um, that our colleagues that, that want more more discussion who are not on the government governance committee um, deserve more discussion. I mean, I called the person that I was to call. They got it yesterday, but you know, and, and this has been my worry on several things. We shouldn't be getting things you know, eight, 10, 12, one day in advance, um, you know, and so I, I think it's very appropriate to put it on information and, and let folks hear the discussion tonight, hear the pros and the cons, and, and then think about it and vote in two weeks. We can still meet every deadline and have it done by the appropriate and designate in a mandated time. So Madam Clerk, Let's circle back. What's the present motion on the floor? I had my hand Please. up. Uh, Ms. Okay. This is Laura Hughes. I had my hand up. All right. This is not all showing at once on my screen. Madam Chair, uh, Mrs. Hughes is next, and I need Mrs. Riggs and Mrs. Weems to put their hands down if they are done, if they want to be back in the queue. Put them down and put them back up. Mrs. Hughes is next. Okay, Mrs. Hughes. Um, yeah, just a couple of things. Um, Mrs. Riggs stated that there were no big changes on this, that we knew this was coming, and that we knew we were having a meeting. And if there's no huge change to it, then I don't think a two week delay is a big deal. And since the people in charge of getting it onto the agenda knew it was coming, I think that it's unreasonable to you know send it out 24 hours before the meeting and want us to vote on it. On the other hand, Mrs. Weems states that these are a lot of changes. And so if they are, I think more than 24 hours to digest it and discuss it and think about it and how we want to vote on it is appropriate. Either, either way, um, it would not be appropriate to vote on it tonight. And just one more thing, um, a couple of people have said that last year we ran out of time. That's actually not true. We had several board members who refused to take a vote on the evaluation because they didn't like what some other board members were doing. It didn't run out of time, it was an actual refusal. So I just wanted to clarify that that's what happened last year. Thank you. Thank you. So again, Ms. Madam Clark, can you, can you share once again the motion on the floor? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chair, the motion on the floor right now is to add the superintendent's summative performance evaluation process FY20 as an action item 7D and also add committee reports after the information section A, eight, I'm sorry, as item number nine. So do we need to vote on that before we have a substitute motion? Or can I adjust that motion since I asked for that original motion? 
you would need uh, to make a substitute, substitute motion. motion. Or we can have a straight up and down vote on this motion first, correct? Well, if the motion fails, then what? I don't have another motion on the table. Right, then we would introduce a substitute motion. Well, it would become a new motion, not a substitute motion. Oh, and it, so perhaps we should introduce the substitute motion first. May I ask for somebody to uh, call this for is, that? This is Laura Hughes. I would like to introduce a substitute motion that we add the evaluation discussion to the agenda as information. For tonight. For tonight, yes, I'm sorry. Is there a second? Carolyn Williams will second that. So the motion on the floor to amend the agenda to uh, have the superintendent summative evaluation process be added as a second information item and to have the committee reports added as was previously proposed. So that motion has been proposed and seconded. So can we have, is everybody understanding what they're voting on right now? Madam Chair, will you please, um, will you please read that motion again? Unless our clerk chooses to. <laughs> Fine. My understanding is that the substitute motion on the table is to add the superintendent summative performance evaluation process FY20 as the second item under information and to include adding the committee reports added to uh, item number uh, nine. Yes. Is everybody clear on what they're voting on at the moment? Oh, okay. So, Madam Clerk, would you please take a verbal vote? Thank you. We will begin with in alphabetical order with Mrs. Anderson. Beverly Anderson, no. Mr. Edwards. Ann Edwards, yes. Mrs. Felton. Mrs. Felton, yes. Mrs. Holtz. Dorothy Holtz, no. Ms. Hughes. Laura Hughes, yes. Mrs. Manning. Victoria Manning, yes. Uh, Ms. Melnick. Kimberly Melnick, no. Ms. Owens. Jessica Owens, yes. Ms. Riggs. Ms. Riggs, no. Ms. Rye. Ms. Rye, no. Ms. Weems. Carolyn Weems, yes. Thank you. The votes returned are one, two, six, yes, and five, no. So the substitute motion has passed. So, uh, so the agenda is adopted as so noted. M Madam Clerk, do we need a separate vote for the agenda again, or does that satisfy that? That satisfies it. If you all are satisfied, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Uh, so just let me get back to our overall agenda and we are up to action item A, personnel report. Uh, any questions on the personnel report? Administrative appointments. Okay, hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you take a roll call vote, please? Thank you. Again, we'll go in alphabetical order. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mrs. Felton? Sharon Felton, yes. Mrs. Holtz? Dorothy Holtz, yes. Mrs. Hughes? Laura Hughes, yes. Mrs. Manning? Victoria Manning, yes. Victoria Manning, yes. Uh, Mrs. Melnick? Kimberly Melnick, yes. Mrs. Owens? Jessica Owens, yes. Ms. Riggs? Ms. Riggs, yes. Ms. Rye? Carolyn Rye, yes. 
Ms. Weems? Carolyn Weems, yes. And I'm sorry, but I, <laughs> I did not hear who made the motion and who seconded it. Ah, that's because we didn't do one. <laughs> my, my apologies. Uh, I will entertain, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the personnel report. I move that we approve. This is Victoria Manning. Thank you, Mrs. Manning. And a second? Ben Anderson, second. Is that satisfactory, Ms. Madam Clerk? Now we need a vote. That is satisfactory, and it appears the motion has been approved unanimously for approval of the personnel report with one administrative appointment. Point of order. I'm sorry. Point of order. Don't we need to vote after the motion is made? Jesus. Yeah, I think, sorry, this is Mrs. Linetti. Mrs. Madam Chair, I think you can ask if everybody wants to just use the vote that they made beforehand or you can redo the votes. Is there any objection to using the votes as previously stated before the motion was taken? Okay, but a fair question, so thank you. All right, then the, uh, the personnel report, administrative report appointments are approved. Uh, Dr. Spence, any comment on, on that? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, sorry, just making sure I'm unmuted here. Um, we do have one administrative appointment. I'm very pleased to note uh, that uh, this evening you have accepted our recommendation for Mary Norton to serve as the as a coordinator of public relations in the Department of Communications and Community Engagement. Obviously, given the, the online nature of this meeting, we're not going to introduce her to you in person tonight, and we'll take the opportunity to do so. Most of you know Mary. She has been working in the um, Department of Communications and Community Engagement as an Administrative Office Associate and Executive Office Associate. And um, during that time has completed her degree at the University of Virginia and positioned herself well to join the team as a coordinator for public relations. So we're excited about that and thank you for accepting our recommendation. Okay, on behalf of all of us, congratulations to Ms. Norton. And we do look forward to the chance for a face-to-face -face, uh, congratulatory uh, point and in the agenda. Thank you. Okay. Uh, action item B, 7B, Policy Review Committee recommendations. These were originally presented March 10th for information. I will read them. There are five here listed. Policy 368, Employee Lactation Support, Policy 5-7, non-discrimination and non-harassment of students. Regulation 5-21.3, discipline of students with disabilities. Policy 5-76, homeless children and youth. Policy 737, gifts to staff members. Is there a motion to approve? Kim Melnick, so moved. Second. Dorothy Holt, second. Thank you. Any discussion on any of these? Again, they were presented previously. Okay, with that, Madam Clerk, um, a roll call vote, please. Thank you. I'll begin with Ms. Anderson. Mrs. Anderson. I'll come back. Mr. Edwards? Beverly Anderson, yes. Thank you. Dan Edwards, yes. Mrs. Felton? Mrs. Felton, yes. Mrs. Holt? Dorothy Holt, yes. Mrs. Hughes? Laura Hughes, yes. Mrs. Manning? Victoria Manning, yes. Mrs. Melnick? Kimberly Melnick, yes. Ms. Owens? Jessica Owens, yes. Ms. Riggs? Ms. Riggs, yes. Mrs. Rye? Carolyn Rye, yes. Mrs. Weems? Carolyn Weems, yes. Madam Chair, a unanimous vote to approve the Policy Review Committee recommendations of five policies, I'm sorry, four policies and one regulation as presented. Oh, thank you for that clarification. Okay, yes, then that they are all uh, approved. Thank you, and thank you, PRC members. 
Action item C, appointment of a hearing officer. And Ms. Linetti, I'm gonna ask you to uh, provide an explanation, please. Certainly. Good evening, Madam Chair and Vice Chair, school board members, and Dr. Spence, I'm Cammie Linetti, School Board Legal Counsel. This is a somewhat unusual motion, and normally I would have briefed you in closed session, but under the circumstances, we determined it would just be more expedient for me to come with to you directly and ask you for the ability to appoint a hearing officer. We have a school board policy 5-7, which you actually, I think, just amended, um, has to do with non-discrimination, non-harassment of students. Part of the procedure required by the U.S. Department of Education is there must be an investigation report and there must be an ability to appeal that uh, of report if, you, if the individuals involved in the investigative report disagree with the findings. And there's one or two ways that school board can do it. They can have a hearing themselves or they can appoint a hearing officer. There has only been one other time when we've had to do this about two years ago. Under the circumstances, because I believe that this might be a somewhat lengthy hearing and it might be difficult to put a large amount of school board members and witnesses in a room, my suggestion is going to be that we use the hearing officers we've done in the past. To do that, I need to be able to hire one and there are certain timelines that have already passed because of the um, time period the close, school's been closed. So what I'm asking the school board to do is to allow the superintendent to go ahead and appoint a hearing officer to handle the appeal and to make all necessary arrangements and extend the timeline so that we can get the appropriate hearing up. We have spoken with the family involved in this. They're waiting for your determination and we believe we have one or two individuals that we are available to be a hearing officer depending on the date we pick. Again, I don't want to go into the actual details for why, because this is a, um, a confidential matter, but I'm just asking for the authority under the policy seven to allow the superintendent to go ahead and appoint the hearing officer to make the necessary arrangements. Before I ask for a motion, um, questions for Ms. Linetti and she'll let you know if she can answer or not. <laughs> okay, hearing none, is there a motion to approve uh, the appointment of a hearing officer? Um, Kim Melnick, I motion that we approve the appointment of the hearing officer. Thank you. Mary Anderson, I second. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, would you proceed with the verbal vote, please? Thank you. And just to clarify, I understood the vote, I'm sorry, the motion to be to authorize the superintendent to appoint a hearing officer. Is that correct? Yes. This is Mrs. Lay, and also to make the necessary arrangements for the hearing and extend the timeline to allow us to complete the hearing. Thank you. And that would be as it's written on the agenda cover sheet if you're looking for the specific language. Thank you. I'll begin with the um, Ms. Anderson. Beverly Anderson. Yes. Mr. Edwards. Dan Edwards. Yes. Mrs. Felton. Sharon Felton, yes. Mrs. Holtz? Dorothy Holtz, yes. Mrs. Hughes? Laura Hughes, yes. Mrs. Manning? Victoria Manning, yes. Mrs. Melnick? Kimberly Melnick, yes. Ms. Owens? Jessica Owens, yes. Ms. Riggs? Ms. Riggs, yes. Mrs. Rye? Carolyn Rye, yes. And Mrs. Weems? Carolyn Weems, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. On a unanimous vote, the motion has been approved. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, so now on to uh, information, and I will turn this over to our Legislative Committee Chair, Mrs. Melnick. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. And this is in um, also in lieu of my committee report. Um, but tonight um, we have Joel Andrus from Kemper Consulting who will give us an update um, from the Legislative Committee. Welcome, Mr. K Welcome, Joel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I almost called you Mr. Kemper. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. Andrews. <laughs> yeah. uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, Madam Chair, school board members, thank you for having me. I, I miss seeing you all over the last couple of months, but I'm glad to be with you this evening. Um, I, I won't be long, but I want, do want to give a little bit of context um, before I'm going to talk about here in a second. Uh, as you know, every single year, uh, 
about this time, we discuss uh, amendments to the VSBA legislative positions. Uh, there are some years where we, we have recommendations, some years where we do not have recommendations. Um, this year, we, we have one recommendation, and um, not surprising, um, it is related to uh, the coronavirus and the pandemic and some challenges that, that we've, we've all been facing, not just Virginia Beach, but, but uh, all school divisions. Um, and just remind you all a couple things, as, as you all know already, on March 12th, uh, the governor called um, for a state of emergency, which gave him um, certain authority. Um, also, he, as you all know, um, shut down uh, the ability for public gatherings of 10 or more, which made meeting in public for, or, or for public bodies to just not be able to happen. Um, there was a little bit of authority to sort of meet um, emergency things, but from a general business practice, that, that wasn't possible. The one fortunate part of of this was that this all happened between the end of session, which uh, concluded a couple of days late on March 12th, and what we refer to as veto session or reconvene session on April 22nd, where the General Assembly comes back in for a single day to review um, governor's amendments and, and things like that. And so from a timing perspective, it, it sort of worked out where the governor had an opportunity to make a lot of pretty necessary changes and updates as a response to the coronavirus. One of those changes was the ability to allow public bodies and, and school boards um, to conduct business electronically when there is an emergency order that makes it unsafe for people to meet in person. Um, the, the challenge that we may or may not have, but this is why we want to, we want to look at this from a long-term perspective, is that this is tied to budget language, which means when the budget expires, this language also expires, assuming it's not put back in the budget. And as we, we have seen, um, Already, you, you might recall a couple of years ago, we spearheaded some legislation dealing with flexibility on closing of schools that were specifically related to um, mandatory evacuations. Um, and uh, while we first thought that we might need some more flexibility under that language, um, when we had a two week closure, that, that ended up not being as much of a, a big deal. But we're also thinking about this from a long term perspective of what other situations might school boards and other governing bodies need to meet electronically in the event that the governor calls an emergency um, order, or in the event that uh, the pandemic stretches out beyond a couple of years. God forbid, hopefully that does not happen or there's some other scenario where, where we might have, might want to have this authority. And so instead of letting it expire potentially with the end of the budget, um, we thought it might be prudent to go ahead and give um, local governing bodies and other governing bodies the ability to meet uh, electronically when um, the governor calls an emergency order and it is unsafe at that, at that point to, to meet in person. And so the proposal that we have this evening is um, really dealing with that specifically. We had talked about a number of, of other things at our, at our, our meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, one of the, the other uh, issues that we are, are working on and kind of dealing with is um, all the various deadlines and requirements that, that school boards have uh, and school divisions have to meet, um, whether it is dealing with standards of accreditation or SOLs or teacher licensure, all those types of things that kind of exist out there. Uh, fortunately, the General Assembly and the governor gave the uh, state superintendent of public instruction pretty broad authority to waive some of those things. Uh, so we're working on the list to do that, but given that's kind of a really specific thing, we, we didn't think that was necessarily appropriate for um, for the VSBA proposal. And so we really focused on this kind of ongoing authority dealing with electronic meetings. Um, I will also say just by context to, to um, looking ahead here a little bit, uh, the, the General Assembly will likely reconvene sometime later on this summer, potentially fall, um, for a special session. Uh, this is going to be focused on the budget and uh, 
once they get the new revenue projections and a reforecast, they will likely need to go into session to address the shortfall. Uh, the governor's budget that he submitted and is approved by the General Assembly didn't really make cuts, but really froze money and froze spending until they could get better projections and where they'll go and make um, chain, actual changes to the budget. But since they didn't know how much money they really had to spend, they just kind of froze all that until, until they could get a better grip on it and have a special session to deal with those specifically. So um, I don't want to go on too long. I can talk about uh, you know, other things that are happening in the, in, in, in the legislative world right now, but really wanted to focus on that one DSPA legislative proposal. Mrs. Melnick, would you like to entertain questions on that point first, and then perhaps allow you tell me what you want to? Sure. No, want to go from here. for Joel. Um, that's great. I mean, we, you know, we put a lot of thought into this because no, nobody saw this coming except for Bill Gates, and we would like the opportunity to be able to continue to function. And so, of course, this is. This is something that will go to VSBA and their board will decide whether or not this moves forward with their agenda, but this is what we would like to submit to the VSBA. Um, I don't know if any of the committee members want to weigh in. Um, Mrs. Linetti, Trinace Riggs, Sharon Felton. This is Mrs. Linetti. I think this is an area that a lot, both the local government attorneys association and the Virginia school board association and council of school attorneys have been looking at. We need a little bit more flexibility. In this case, this is a long-term epidemic, but certainly in a, in a disaster situation, such as a hurricane, we could also see similar situations and the rules have the Virginia code sections having to do electronic meetings, remote participation meetings make a little difficult to get some of the business that needs to be done in a long-term situation. So we're not making any recommendations specifically what has to happen, but I think there are a number of organizations that are looking at this and think that we need to have a little bit more flexibility so we don't have to wait for the General Assembly to pass a bill. We lucked out this time because it just happened to happen while they could still come back in session. If it was during the summer, it would be more difficult to deal with this. So I think it needs to be looked at. And I think we're developing ways to do this that are convenient for the public to handle. And obviously we can re uh, refine those by the time a bill comes up. But I think this would be a good thing for all localities to have the ability to do so they can continue to get business done. Good evening. This is Sharon Feltz. And I just had to say thank you, Joel, for that detailed uh, description of this bill. I just had to say as the vice president for the VSBA regional, Tidewater regional area, you do have um, most, if not all of the division looking and thinking in the same way. They are glad to know that um, the Virginia Beach Division is moving forward with this. Uh, believe it or not, um, the Virginia Division seemed to be the model for everyone. They saw, and they've said this to me, they sort of kind of sit back and wait to see what we're gonna do and how we're gonna move forward. So I just like to say thank you, uh, Chair. Um, uh, Kimberly Milnick for pushing forward this as well, but other divisions are looking for this support, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with what uh, uh, Attorney Lynette is saying as well. We need something to put forward to be functional. Thank you. And and Mrs. Felton, um, Mrs. Linetti is always in the forefront with all of this. She's she is well versed in this, and um, and thank you, Mrs. Linetti. Thank you. This this is Trinace. I agree. I think it's something that we definitely need to have in place. So um, thanks, um, Cami, for, uh, you know, stepping up and making sure that we're getting this as one of our um, legislative agenda items. So definitely, I, I wholeheartedly support it. I think Mrs. Manning has her hand raised. Yes, Mrs. Manning. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. I do support this effort. Uh, we were put in a very tough spot on violating FOIA um, with also needing to conduct business. Uh, so I support legislation that will put this into law so that if this happens again in the future that we will be as 
the uh, proposed legislation suggests be put into the 21st century. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Mr. Everett, what, Edwards, your hand is raised. Yes, I appreciate that. It does take a moment to unmute. Um, the uh, important thing in pushing this forward, which I strongly support, is to uh, make sure that it's understood that we can functionally have the public uh, as a part of the meeting electronically. Um, you know, we've got uh, attendees uh, in the actual meeting. We've got people watching on television. We receive public comment um, and the opportunity is there. And um, if it's not uh, a part of that package, I, I suggest we ensure that, that that's included in what we sent on up to the VSBA is ex exactly how successful we were in providing uh, opportunities uh, for the public to engage during our meetings. Thanks. Oh, thank you. So Joel, is it appropriate to add a little cover sheet on that or do you just, I mean, it's, it's a pretty well-written um, proposal. I believe um, we have sent it up that way in the past once it's approved. I, I'll also add one other thing if that's okay, which is, you know, e even in the event that the VSBA does not not accept this as, as a new um, or amended policy position, um, certainly I believe the Legislative Committee will probably continue to talk about that and probably uh, add it to our own legislative agenda as we look towards the uh, 2021 session. Excellent. Thank you. Any, anything else? from your committee, Ms. Melnick, at the at this time. No, Madam Chair, but Carolyn Weems has her hand raised. Dan, are you still in the queue? Did hey, you want to speak again? Mrs. Weems, you go ahead in the meantime. Um, yes, I was just gonna kind of um, agree with Mr. Andrews. I think whatever VSBA does or does not do, I think that this should be um, a priority of our legislative agenda from the Virginia Beach City Public Schools. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, last call. And Mrs. Melnick, do you feel that concludes uh, this agenda item? I do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you again to you and your committee. Okay, so what is now our second information item? is the superintendent summative evaluation process. I think we heard about that earlier this evening. So I will, I will begin, the, and Ms. Linetti of course stands ready with questions, but we will certainly open it up to all, but just wanna introduce this topic as it gets posted on our screen. Are we working on that? Wonderful, thank you. Uh, so the superintendent evaluation is one of the most important roles of a school board, the hiring and the annual evaluation. And we, we take that role very seriously, us collectively as a board. And um, one of the charges of the new governance committee was because it didn't ever have a home to fall under before. <laughs> Uh, and the timing was just perfect and at the, the committee established right around the, the start of the new calendar year. At the same time, the Department of Education released updated guidelines. Uh, we, we collectively as the board all, all wanted more, I think, um, there was a process in place, but it wasn't documented any, anywhere. And, and to be fair to us and to the superintendent, uh, we just felt this was an ideal time to document an, an, a formal process, a, a, a process that in some cases va just validates what we've already been doing. But among the things um, it does is establishes a, a timeline that we will all be very sure to adhere to. <laughs> 
Uh, it provides reasonable expectations. What's, what's, re what's expected of us in this process? Uh, it reiterates the, for the superintendent, you know, the expectation, of course, of his own self-evaluation and, and, and as, as a major expectation. Um, it does provide alignment with the DOE guidelines. And there were other, as well as VSBA guidelines, the, his own contract, uh, our school board bylaw appendices, and, and any other law bylaw or policy that we may have that touches on this. So that was all kept in mind. And as for the instrument itself, the evaluation instrument, it, it, it still is very familiar to all of us. And it was, it has been distributed or disseminated already with thanks to our clerk, just to uh, get you all in, in the right, in the thinking mode. Uh, what this what this document does is attempt to elaborate further on the considerations and the criteria as as we go about uh, providing input uh, based on this document. So the instrument itself, uh, some minor uh, changes from VSBA, but for the most part, that we do have some flexibility with it. The committee as a whole, as far as the instrument itself, decided to defer until fall any um, deeper discussion on the actual, the standards, and there are seven standards, and then there's anywhere from six to nine indicators under each standard. So as a committee, we, we have, uh, pledge to take a closer look at the actual indicators, which, which ones do we want to keep, which could be merged, which don't we need, what, which ones maybe we think are, should be there and aren't. And we will also have a discussion about the weighting of the standards, which there's some flexibility with. Uh, but uh, for now, there, for this year, there was a slight adjustment from the VSBA in terms of the seven standards. Uh, and and the weight of the last standard uh, on student achievement. So we have pledged to take a closer look at that come fall. Uh, let's see, we are, uh, just give me a moment here. So the evaluation itself, um, if. Maybe I'll just run through it very quickly and then we'll open the floor up. If we could go back to the start and we'll see where the timeline comes into place, where the, the instrument moving forward. Uh, and we started this year to just start the process, you know, let's get it out sooner to school board members. So May 1st, it was dis disseminated. Uh, we're, we're asked, and again, that we will, when we uh, send out further instruction, provide to you all the VD, the new VDOE guidelines, the, the so that you can see for yourselves uh, where the alignment comes into play. Uh, and again, it's just these bullets here in number two are to are to document all the all the other documents that govern that drive this process. So when we say we have some flexibility, but we are also governed by these these formal documents. Number three, so that's to acknowledge that. Number three, the superintendent will submit or present to the school board members his self-evaluation and any submitting supporting documentation no later than, than May 15th. So that will be the goal moving forward for this year. The superintendent has pledged to do so within one week of that. And it's still our hope that uh, getting down to moving on to number four that he even with this now slightly adjusted timeline that he will still have the opportunity to meet with us to formally present his self-evaluation which will be emailed to us beforehand and that would provide an opportunity for any clarifying questions then we get into number five we did we're trying here to reinforce again this is very much in alignment with the vdoe guidance uh, that the performance ratings are made at the performance standard level. The, the, set, the indicators all factor into a single standard and all the indicators should be considered. Uh, they should be based on a preponderance of the evidence. 
and then a, a b c d here for data sources to be acceptable this is getting into just evidence and criteria uh, data sources must meet the test of logic validity reliability fairness and legality uh, straight out of vdoe booklet to the extent reasonable the performance rating should be based on the superintendent's performance during the current fiscal year uh, data from the prior year will be considered when current year data is not yet available and that's to recognize the time frame of the evaluation which is end of june versus when a lot of student data comes in which is the fall uh, constructive or explanatory comments should be included as they have been in the past moving on to number six uh, School board members should re review the summative evaluation instrument and come to the school board meeting prepared to substantiate assessment for each standard. So that would be the meeting that we would have in early June in closed session, uh, being a personnel matter. And this is uh, where there, the significance of this is that the goal here is to, as a board collectively, develop a, a, a single summative evaluation product that would then be presented to the superintendent. Uh, so while we all still work on our individual instruments, there are working papers, so to speak, and we come collectively to the, the meeting, uh, the best practice would be for each school board member to prepare an individual draft of the summative evaluation instrument, as we've been asked to do in the past, to use as personal reference while deliberating on the final evaluation. B, school board members who anticipate, we, we addressed here in B and C about any member absent from that, that particular meeting would certainly be offered the opportunity to submit in advance to the chair their input. So that's what B and C cover. And then we get to seven and here is where no later than the first meeting in June, so that, so you understand that time frame there where we'll, we will meet this year, we would meet this year. Uh, for each standard, the school board would rate a, rate a point value of one to four, as we've done individually in the past. The final point value for each standard should be determined through collective discussion and consensus. So we would, as a whole, discuss each we would go one standard at a time and have a, a an honest respectful this discussion with uh, backing it up with our comments and referring to different pieces out of the superintendent and self evaluation and and what other whatever other data pieces uh, if a, and then it, we would the goal would be to to have a collaborative discussion and consensus on a rating for that standard because ultimately it's the seven standards that each have a rating that, that add up to a total for the, for the full, for the complete evaluation. Uh, if a consensus cannot be reached, the final, final point value for each standard would be determined by a majority vote of the members present. The B, B, B really just covers, you know, how you, at the end tallying up at the end the seven standards with the help of the school board clerk or and the school board attorney at that meeting using the calculation formula as set forth in the instrument and that's where too we would collectively gather the comments from that evening that we collectively decide would be included in that final document so that it ends with these, these final pieces here, all equally important, where the chair and the vice chair at that point meet with the superintendent to, pre to present the written summative evaluation at some point very soon after. And then at any time prior to June 30th, the school board and the superintendent may meet in closed session to discuss it and, and amend any part of it. But the goal would be that, that, that the night of the the collective meeting there would be a vote that night on the final summative evaluation that would be presented to the superintendent and we would only collectively meet again if there was a request on his or her part to do so and then we ended here with you know again honoring that june 30th 
final deadline and that school board members, as, as we all, all are already aware, will respect the confidentiality of the annual evaluation process and will not disseminate confidential personnel information without authorization of the superintendent. So with that, uh, Ms. Linetti, would you like, I, I will probably just open it up for questions first or comments, unless you have anything you wanna add first. It might be better if I just respond to any legal aspects of the uh, questions that come up. And I, and I, I do want to, again, emphasize this was a product of, of a governance committee, at least two, two meetings. And, uh, and this at this time, it's on at this time on behalf of the committee that I'm, we're, this is being presented for, for your approval. And I do want to say a longer term plan is not so long term, but that at the July retreat, I will I will recommend that we have a short amount of time to, to reassess this process, you know, to give it to give this process our best shot to know the thought that's gone into it to know how it is so well aligned. Uh, but certainly that it's not it's not a 10 commandments that's cut in stone that we can and that we can talk in July about how the process went and whether we want to look at more things in the early fall and in addition to the the, the, uh, the ones I already mentioned. So with that, we will open it up and we see some hands here now. So it looks like Mrs. Weems. So I wasn't sure if that was still up from the last time. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. I forgot to put my hand down. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I just wanted, you can go ahead if you had anything to say, because it was no, still up. No, no, I'll just wait since I was on the committee. Okay. Like okay, Mrs. Melnick, are you in, sure. your hand intended to yep. be up? Yep, it was Melnick Holt. Okay. Yep, I see. Okay. All right, so uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to clarify that the only real difference is that yep. um, the, um, that we will present a single summative evaluation from the entire board uh, based on consensus. And that the chair and the vice chair will meet with the superintendent to present, to present our work. Is that correct? That those two points are correct. Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Holtz. Thank you. Um, that was also my understanding. I just wanted that to be clarified. That's the major difference. But I wondered if, when the governance board discussed this, did they search to see what other school systems are doing? Is anyone else following this model? I'll allow my members to weigh in. The answer is yes. Uh, so I'll leave it to Mrs. Weems and Mr. Uh, Edwards as to, to share to the extent they choose to. I, I should have. I, I can add that we, this is uh, the Chesapeake, this is, seems to be Chesapeake's basic process. Um, but again, there's, you know, there's there's details in every process, but uh, they they were one of the districts that was reached out to. Um, either of you care to share, my fellow colleagues? This is uh, Dan Edwards, and yes, uh, Mrs. Williams and I um, went out went out and uh, solicited <clears throat> current current processes from uh, several school boards and. Uh, by coincidence, we we hadn't coordinated, and we both ended up talking to Chesapeake. Um, but um, we did talk to a number of others, including uh, Prince William and uh, York County, um, and um, uh, several of them did do this same process. And it's also in in, uh, in alignment with the VSBA's. Um, uh, best practices as well. I mean, the the board individually, again, as we all keep telling ourselves, hopefully, and listening, individually, we are we we don't have a voice. Um, 
our only voice is our collective voice and the evaluation process should not be any different from that. Um, it's an important process that we need to work very hard at, come prepared for, and, uh, and, and listen and, and, and do it right. Um, but the, uh, it, particularly in, in Chesapeake, um, their process is they uh, actually um, collect the individual inputs and, and, and shred them at the end. I mean, there, there's no, there's, you know, there's simply working papers that uh, belong to the uh, individuals and they have no meeting once, once the uh, process is completed and the end product, which is a collective evaluation is complete. Uh, thanks for asking. Well, continuing with my question, uh, with the board of 11 people and the scale is one through four, what happens if you, if we have a range of one, two, three, four, well, how do we resolve that? I, I just need to understand it better. Um, frankly, Mrs. Holtz, we, we listen to each other and why we think the numbers are whatever individually they think they are. And hopefully we, you know, we, we listen and um, make adjustments, uh, not individually, but, but collectively, you know, the first part of the process will be obviously getting everybody's thoughts and uh, numbers uh, out there. And then I think we all need to listen and be prepared to uh, un understand and accept the rationale of our colleagues and, and uh, come up with a, uh, a common agreed upon uh, position, uh, just like we do on any other uh, issue. Um, certainly seeking uh, strong consensus uh, and not being happy with uh, uh, six votes. But I mean, ultimately, if we can't bring ourselves to do it, that's that would be the end process, but, but hopefully it would not. I, I think this is important and critical and, and we all need to have a voice in it. And, and more important, we all need to have a set of ears that are part of that process as well. Um, I'd like to comment on that, if I may, um, Ms. Rice, since I was on the committee. Yes, um, that was, yeah, that's a good question, Ms. Holt. Um, and we did reach out. Norfolk does the same as we have done since I've been on the board for, for 18 years is, you know, you have 11 evaluations. Well, in their case, they have, I think, either seven or nine. But if I give a three, like say standard one, if I give a, you know, three, two, somebody else gives a two, eight, somebody, and five people give a four, oh, one person gives a one, eight, another person gives a three, six, you just take those numbers and you average them. That's what we've always done. That's what Norfolk still do, does. Chesapeake used to do that until last year that they did a consensus model. And they actually voted on which category, because, you know, as you remember, each number um, has kind of like a, I guess, a range of exemplary, exemplary um, proficient, <laughs> improvement, all that stuff. So they, they changed and they, and they kind of came up with a consensus of which category. But I think the problem, the, the heartburn that I have is, I mean, it is very difficult and, and I feel for superintendents that, that have multiple bosses, you know, they have 11 bosses, but I think that each one of our voices matter. And so the only, you know, the, the thing that gives me pause and I'm a little leery with a consensus model is basically, let's just take a standard one. Um, say three people, you know, gave a one and, and told why and had their working papers and defended it and thought that was right. Three other people gave a two, did the same thing. Five people gave a four. Well, you've got six people given a one or two, you've got five people given a four, but then if you can't come up with consensus, you go for a vote. And is that going to come out with five people given a four where you actually had more given ones and twos? Um, so to me, when it comes down, I, I'm not really sure. And I, and I, I know I emailed this to Cami and, and Chairman Rye, what does consensus mean? I agree with Ms. Holtz. 
What does it mean is that a six vote, and, and if you can't come up with consensus, because I think it's going to be very, very, very difficult on all these standards to come up with the same number because you have everything from one to four. You have a 1.6, a 3.3, a 3.7, a 3.9, a 4.0. I think it's going to be difficult to come, to come up with a consensus. And I just don't want it to be to where you just have six people vote. And to me, the other people's numbers don't even matter. I mean, what, I mean, let's just take an extreme. You have six people to give a four, five people to give a one, and you, but you can't come up with consensus. So so the superintendent gets a four or vice versa. You've got six people given a one. You've got five people given a four. You can't come up with consensus. You take a straw poll or a vote. The ones get it. So he gets ones on that standard where half the board almost thought he deserved better. You know, so I'm, I'm just very cautious about going with the with just voting for six votes to 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 give a number. I just think that um that if I'm one of the bosses evaluating, that my evaluation counts. And I think the 10 of you, your evaluation counts and it should be averaged in into the final. I love, and like I shared with the committee, I really like some of the things that Norfolk's doing. I like some of the things that we've done. I love the fact that um, Chesapeake just comes up with one document given by the chair and vice chair and everything is shredded. I don't think we need to be analyzing everybody's working papers. That's just not, to me, constructive for anybody. Um, but I do, I'm very leery about the consensus model because if you can't come up with a consensus, you go for a straight vote. And I think that's leaving some of our board members' opinions just totally out. And that's all I'll see, say for right now. This is Cammie Linetti. I just wanted to chime in that I spoke with a number of the council school attorneys uh, about how they do their processes. They, as mentioned, Prince William actually hires a facilitator and the board just works with the facilitator to come out. But in most cases, they, they sit there and they just work through very long meetings to come up with one document. And then obviously the same discussion with Norfolk and Chesapeake. Uh, Karen, more questions. Mr. Edwards, do you care to Mr. Edwards, do you hear me now? Yes, I hear you fine. I'm just unmuting. Oh, uh, no, I was, I thought it was me. No, it was me. I just wanted uh, to ask if you had anything to share about any other district before we go ahead to these other. No, I already, I already shared on those that I had uh, spoken of and to, and. Um, How and about I, your, your county? Do you care to comment on that one or no? I'm sorry, what? Your county, do you care to comment on that one? Well, yeah, theirs was a little different in that they 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 use a statistical mode, not not an average, and um, they they actually um, take the uh, I, I guess going back to uh, Mrs. Weems' uh, uh, example, um, they they take the number that has the 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 most and again, if you all want to on a on a sidebar there, look, you know, Google mode, statistical mode. Uh, it's the number that gets that is the highest frequency. In other words, if we had um, two fours, uh, five threes, two twos, and whatever three. And it, in other words, it's the single number that had that just happened that that happens to have the most support uh, for each standard, um, and um, I and that's done without it, you know. And I, I'm not comfortable with that because I, I think we need to listen to each other and try to drive towards that central number based on what we all feel. Um, after we uh, listen to each other as well as present our own. Okay, thank you. Um, this is Manning. Yes, I hope everyone can hear me okay. I lost internet connection, so I'm on my phone. Can you hear me okay? Yep. You sound great. Okay, 
So I do like the part of the change where the chair and the vice chair present the final product to the superintendent. I think that's very valuable. I guess I'm trying to understand the change. Currently, it seems like we have a more equitable process by having equal representation of each board member. We each give our, our, uh, our feedback, our input, and our score, and it's averaged together with um, all the other board members. So it, it, it's, it's, it's equitable. Um, and I just really feel that this new suggestion, um, you know, we could have um, six board members that believe the superintendent is doing a poor job, you know, say it's on a scale of one to 10 and they give him a two and five board members give him a nine. Um, and the superintendent would end up with a score of a two. I just really don't feel that that's um, an appropriate representation and an equitable representation of each board member elected to serve and to um, provide the feedback regarding the superintendent's performance. Uh, so I guess my question is, why do you wanna change the process from currently where I believe that we have an equitable representation to one that goes to a majority vote. If I could interject for one moment, again, we have to remember the majority vote isn't the starting point. The starting point is if, if we have members, the example you gave, I think echoing what Mr. Edwards was saying, that each each member might reconsider what what they came in coming in with an open mind and thinking well gee i didn't think of this or i didn't think of that and that if if there are these two extremes that they would meet somewhere in between ultimately uh before getting to the quote unquote majority oh i thought i read in the um proposal that it would be um consensus my by majority vote am i incorrect in that well, i'm happy to reread that that's 7A that I believe Mrs. Manning's referring to. Uh, the final point value for each standard should be determined through collective discussion and consensus, which is what Mr. Edwards was speaking to. If a consensus cannot be reached, the final point value would be determined by a majority vote of the members present. Yeah, that's what I was referring to, the majority vote. But that's... Uh, I don't know if that, any other, Mr. Edwards, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, other than the fact that, yeah, the, the majority vote is uh, end of the evening default if, uh, if, if we haven't done it right. I guess my question hasn't been answered um, regarding how I believe that it's more equitable this way that we are currently doing than the new proposed measures. Uh, can I say something? I was on the, the committee. Uh, if Mrs. Yeah, we have Mrs. Hughes on the queue. Is that okay with you, Mrs. Hughes? Go ahead, Mrs. Riggs. Um, I'm going to reiterate what Dan said, but just add a little bit more. Um, when you when you work on a board, it's a, it is a consensus. It's the dem basically the democratic consensus. What our elected officials do up in um, in the state and federal government, it's just it's something that you work with when you're an elected official. You come to a consensus. You share your positives, your negatives, and like Dan said and, and um, Carolyn said, the fact is you might come in with something that we, some of the other people, did not, did not think about. And they're like, oh, yeah. So then you've got that opportunity to be able to look at the entire picture and say, yep, we really needed to look at that. That does make a, a major difference and you come to the consensus. So I think that this gives us the opportunity to share everything that we have a feeling about and what we've seen or not seen and specifically, you know, share it from our notes 
and that we come to that agreement. And if we can't one way or the other, and it might, it, you know, it could be somewhere right in the middle, then, then that we would come to the vote. But I think this gives us the opportunity to express our, what we've seen, what we haven't seen, and the positives and the negatives. So I think it's something that we really need to try and look at because this is basically um, how boards usually work. So I, I would like to try it. Uh, could I just add one more thing to that, please? Well, I, I was and next in line. Can I go with, ahead? Excuse I'm me, Ms. Anderson. Th this exactly. just has to do with, the, with reaching the summative evaluation, but I'll, I'll wait. Okay, um, just a few quick points. I don't see a reason why we couldn't have sort of a hybrid. So if we came together to do a single document, I can actually see the value in that as long as everyone is getting input. But as far as the final scores, um, you know, and of course, you know, my experience is one year of doing this, but you know, my one experience is that when some people didn't like other people's scores, they were able to dismiss them by not voting. So with this process, if some people don't like other people's scores, they can dismiss them by voting. And I think it would be better to create this single document with input from everybody, but whatever the final score is on each item could still continue to be an average of all of the score, the scores. Um, my, my second point here is that um, we had to make comments if our scores fell below a certain number. And I think, and maybe this has been done, I, I don't remember if this was said or not, that should be amended to comments should be used to justify whatever your score is not just if it's above or below something, but there should be comments for every score. You, you should have to justify it, whether it's perfect or zero or anywhere in between. And then my, my third comment would just be that, um, I, I think it's great to ask around what other divisions are doing and get ideas and you kind of take a little bit from here and a little bit from there to try to become more efficient. But as Mrs. Felton pointed out, People around the state look to see what we're doing. So if we do it a little bit differently, I think that's okay. And I think perhaps this hybrid approach might be a better way to, to go with this. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hughes. Mrs. Riggs? Can you hear me, folks? Yes, I'm sorry. I just lowered my hand. I don't I don't need to say anything else. Point well point well taken. Uh, now Mrs. Anderson, Miss Owens, and then Miss Anderson. Thank you. This is Miss Owens. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm very pleased to see a new method being proposed um, for the evaluation process. I've only participated in the superintendent evaluation the one time, and um, it didn't even seem like an efficient or productive process uh, to me during that experience. Uh, the one thing that uh, became really apparent to me during that uh, time was that the board together, I guess, needs to have a more clear matrix of expectations for the grading or evaluating um, to help standardize the process. Um, because while I expect that there's going to be differences in, I guess, opinions, um, seeing numbers where we have ones and then on the opposite spectrum fours for the same standard, um, shows more of a problem with the board evaluation process to me um, than it does anything with the superintendent. Uh, for whether it's a student or an employee, we expect 
a group to grade, if you will, on a matrix that is able to be followed. If we had, you know, students that are turning in a portfolio of work to three teachers and we have ones and fours on their work, we would be looking at the matrix of grading and saying, where are we missing something? Um, how are we getting opposite ends by looking at the specific work that we're looking at? And I think that's something that we need to be focused on as a board as well. Um, we need to have a, a target that is specific for the superintendent to shoot for the same way we need to have a specific and clear target for students or any other employee. Um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that this will be an opportunity for us to um, clarify those expectations so that we don't have as much issues of being ones and fours or twos and tens or whatever the examples were. My um, if I may weigh in, Ms. Owens, uh, and maybe we can scroll back to number five on this instrument does speak to your very point. Um, and I and I think here hearing it a different way, the way you presented it and, and as a fresh face, I think reinforces to us that we were on the right path and recognizing that. And, and when you talk about, and so we are attempting through this process, through this documentation to to emphasize to, to each and every one of us what you know again, that they're um, based on evidence, preponderance of evidence related to indicators. And, and again, the criteria, criteria for such evidence. So I, I hope you find that matches up with one of your expectations. Okay, Ms. Sanderson. Thank you. Um, I was on the board, the committee for this as well, on the governance committee, um, and and I just want to point out that um, I agree with with Dan and Trinace both who who've indicated that um, comment your comments when you when you make them and, and as, as Ms. Hughes said, you know everybody should have comments. Absolutely, whether you give a four, you need to have comments supporting why you think. The superintendent deserves a four or whether you give a two or a one you need to have comments but those comments will be reserved to state and say to your colleagues and um and then after listening to all call to all your colleagues you might change your mind a little um or you might you might you might go up or down in, in your you know in your score so um you know, after listening, that's what those comments are for right now. They wouldn't they wouldn't be to give to the superintendent. They would pretty much be to uh, support what your score is and what you think your score is. On the on the other hand, too, um, there's no. I'm sorry. I just want to remind you, we 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 would have the intent. Of the the option would remain to and and i think we would mostly agree that comments would also be part of the form the final summative assessment that we would all collectively decide on what comments to add to that okay but not all comments might 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 move forward but they certainly would be used uh in trying to convince your colleagues that this is why you think this this is what the score should be Sure, and, and so, any other um, member and any member is always free to, to on their own submit their any comments to the superintendent just so that's clear as well okay right may i continue yes okay um the other thing i want to point out is that there is nothing to prohibit us after we've all decided what each individual score would be to prohibit us from taking all of those individual scores and averaging them together to see what we come up with uh, as a summative uh, from the group. I mean, maybe it might, maybe after you average everyone together, it might come out to a 3.5 or a 3.6. And then we all might look at each other and say, okay, well, I can live with that or not, you know, but. There's nothing to prohibit us from still averaging to come out with the average uh, for each score. Uh, we could still do that if we so choose. So I just wanted to say that as well. Um, so anyway, that, that those were my comments on that. And I do I do think that this is this is um, something that is you know worth giving it a try this time. And I think we should move forward with this. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Weems. Is your hand intended to be up? Uh, yes, that's, I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I totally agree with Ms. Anderson. I think that we, that we should all average in our grades and come up with that final number and then you know submit it with one document. I mean, that's exactly what I think that should be done because then that way all 11 of us have input and it's an average, but we still come up with one document. We've talked it through. We've defended our, you know, our reasons of why we're, you know, scoring the superintendent such and such and then um we average it all in we get a final number one document and the chair and the vice chair present it to the superintendent that's exactly what i'm saying thank you i can just weigh in with i think i'm hearing two different things and we're not here we can that that could be used as part of the process. Okay, where do we stand in terms of an average and then move on with discussion using that as part of the process? And you're saying using it as the end tool. So there, I think there's two different things happening here, but that, that's good. That's why we're having this discussion. And just, I just, could I just say that, um, that that's actually what I meant. It could be used as part of the process. We could leave it at that if we're all satisfied with that. Uh, but I just, like it doesn't state in that, any of this that we can't do that uh, to use it as part of the process. I mean, we may we may look at it and say, well, okay, it, it averages out to 3.8, um, you know, I can live with that, but somebody else might say no, and then we, we haven't reached a consensus. So then that's when we have to finally if we haven't reached the consensus, that's when we would have to take a vote. Okay, Mrs. Melnick. So part of the problem is that we as a board seem to operate um, on a different set of evaluation criteria. For example, most of the board meets with Dr. Spence um, throughout the year. We have one-on-ones with him. We can go in with with a partner and meet with him and we talk about things that we're concerned about along the way and we have some board members that won't meet with him and so the important thing to remember is that you just can't walk into the room on evaluation day with your opinion um, when we're using a different set of criteria um, you need to use the indicators and you need to use evidence and averaging discounts all of that um, because there's no incentive to come to the table with evidence or a well thought out argument. And so that's why I think the consensus piece is so important. Um, and I asked my colleagues to really think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Maletti, Linetti, is your hand up? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, it's Cammie Linetti. I do want to remind people, and it's important that you actually look at the instrument itself. You have seven categories, it's standard one through seven. Each one of them, you have to come up with a performance rating. And the performance ratings are the exemplary, proficient, developing needs uh, slash needs improvement, or unacceptable. They are, the way VDOE puts it, they grade that in a, a, a one to four basis on there. There's a little, little bit more complicated because you do have to have a weighting system for standard number seven, which has to do with student achievement. And that's one of the major changes that came this year. So it's not as simple as saying we just get one final grade. There are ways, there is a, what they call option B that's presented in the VDOE guidelines, which would be you don't come up with a number you just would pick for each standard one of those categories, exemplary proficient. In the end, though, it is going to add up to a grade of zero, one to four. The other complication you have is that the superintendent's contract, and this is in um, section 5C, it has to do with the performance based compensation. The way he, you determine his performance based compensation is based on the numerical value of the school board's determination of the superintendent's evaluation instrument for that year. Now, that would that's something I don't feel at this time you can change his, his contract. So you need to know that you've got to come up with a numerical value. Uh, so that would be something we'd have to look at. So it's not as simple as saying, I just want to call exemplary proficient. 
you do need to come up with an eventual number for it. And that's a little different than other school districts have. They don't have that necessarily in a contract with their superintendent. So you have multiple things going on. It's very important that you, you familiarize yourself with the standards and all. It's not, you can't just overall come up with one great, you're going to have to look at each one of these standards. Now, how you get to that number, it could be averaging, that's one way a majority vote, but eventually you are gonna to have to come up with a final, final score for that. And because you have to have a numerical value to meet the contract terms, you're also gonna to have to come up with a way that the evaluation equates to the requirement in section 5C of his contract for performance compensation. So it's not as easy as just saying, we'll do something different. You're stuck right now with what the contract says and what you're required to do by law. Any questions about that, folks? So there, there's obviously this wouldn't have been put together if there wasn't a way to factor that in. But it's important that she points that out. That is that that is an additional layer to address. Okay. And Mrs. Hughes, it looks like your hand is up. Yes. Thank you. I just wanna say that most of this conversation has been about uh, ways to work together, ways to streamline the process and ways to make sure that no one opinion is or evaluation process is discounted and that you know we form a more cohesive group. So I find it unfortunate that Ms. Melnick's most recent comments actually were a justification for discounting some board members' processes. So I hope that, that she's able to go back and, and try to understand the spirit of this as opposed to finding reasons to justify discounting those. Thank you, Mrs. Hughes. Uh, Mrs. Melnick, do you care to elaborate on what on your previous comment or else we'll go no, on to that comment made no sense at all it, it's just that what what happens with this is i mean i'm, I'm just going to put it out there it becomes about politics instead of doing exactly what we're supposed to do which is to evaluate the superintendent's performance and we should be able as 11 adults come together to come up with a consensus when you have that slide scale um, and you don't like something um, or it's your opinion, you refuse to meet with the superintendent, you don't ask questions, that's what this is about. You, you're, you're, you're gonna give them a very low score and someone's gonna try to counteract that. And then you come up with, a, with, with something in the middle and that's the truth. But we should be able to come together and bring evidence instead of giving zeros with no comments, zeros without meeting with the superintendents, while the others are making comments and giving higher scores with evidence. So you eliminate that, work together, you come up with a consensus. That other piece, I, I don't know. I mean, point the finger, it's fine. I, I, can, I can handle that, but this is not that difficult. And we can do this properly um, as, as we were elected to do. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Weems, is your hand intended to be? Um, yes, I mean, I would just like to say that, that I have also found that many people in the past, and again, I've been on the board for years, um, some people have given low scores with a lot of comment. Some people have given lower scores with not much comment. Some have been given mid-range scores with a lot of comment. Some have given mid-range scores with not much comment. Some have given perfect scores across the board with zero comment. Some have given perfect scores with much comment. So um, I've seen it all. But again, I think that um, we're 11 people, exactly. We um, need to evaluate our superintendent. Um, the criteria, you're right, Ms. Melnick, may be different for some. Some people view that you need to speak with the superintendent once a month, every week. Um, some people, I mean, I can count the times that I met with previous superintendents on one hand. Does that make me a board, bad board member? I don't think so. 
so um, again, it's it's different criteria, and you're right. But but again, I think every board member should have his or her voice heard. And I think my evaluation counts. I think your evaluation counts. I think Ms. Holt's evaluation counts, Ms. Hughes' evaluation counts, Mr. Edwards. I think all of our evaluations should count. Okay, I think we, Mrs. Weems will move on then to Mrs. Anderson. Yes, um, you know, I, I agree. Everyone's evaluation should count, especially when we meet together as a group. Because as Dan pointed out earlier, we have no power individually, but the evaluation should reflect our collective input. And so the key here is collective. The key word here is collective. That's the purpose of coming up with one collective evaluation to give to the superintendent. Therefore, we will be speaking as a whole, speaking collectively as a group, um, not individually. So individually, we would be speaking to each other. Um, and then we come up with a collective uh, score for each category. That's all I have to say, thanks. Okay, that leads us to Ms. Owens again. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, I guess, comment. I know Dan mentioned uh, in their exploration of other school districts, that um, I guess Prince William uses a facilitator to help with their evaluation yeah. process. I'm not sure. Across the board. No nope. reason. She yeah. just okay. had an uncomfortable okay. feeling. Use that. And well, so um, not... I'm wondering if that might, where, how people feel about that, if that might be something um, that we need to consider and explore uh, a little bit more as well um, as we're moving through this uh, new process. This is Cami Lanetti. I can just clarify when I talked to Prince William um, school attorney, she said they hire a former superintendent who comes in and basically just they spend a long meeting just working through with this facilitator to reach a final dot, um, agreement. I didn't get any more explanation as to that other than that facilitator sits with the board and works them to a final document. And, and I can add Ms. Owens that that has come up uh, as far as background information. And it certainly was, I see that as being an element of our retreat discussion. Uh, considering for a moment, if, if this process were to go through and we were to give this our, our, our fair shot, that would be part of the, the discussion. You know, uh, were there impediments? Could we have done a better job with a facilitator? Do we not like it at all? Do we think we're okay on our own with a few tweaks? So it, it's, it's a very, it's a fair question. It's obviously, uh, that's just what I wanted to add to that. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Riggs, your hand just went up. Yes, um, I think, uh, I really think that this is the, the method that the governance um, committee went forth and we spent a lot of time on and uh, several people, Carolyn Weems, Dan, Cammie, checked with other locals. I think this is what we need to go with at this time. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how it works because it does give everybody the opportunity to share their feelings and what they've seen or not seen in this evaluation. So I think this is something that we could go on and talk about this forever tonight, but I think it's something that we need to move forward with and then we can talk more about it in the retreat and decide if we need to go with a facilitator or how it worked. But I think this, this is a good shot. It's working with several school boards that are doing very well in their uh, with their school systems doing very well. So I think we should give this a shot. Okay, Mrs. Weems and then Mrs. Anderson. Yeah, 
Murphy? I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm losing connection. Yeah, I just think that, that before we vote in two weeks, we need to really um, be clear and everybody that make sure we're sharing the same vocabulary. What is consensus? What is straw poll? What is um, voting? Is it six, five, five? I mean, there's still a lot of um, terms being thrown out there that seem to contradict each other. So I think in, in the next two weeks, we need to all be really clear of what we're talking about. Okay, Mrs. Anderson. Mrs. Anderson, your hand is raised. Oop, we might have lost. Am I there now? Can you yeah. hear me now? Are you there? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think it's pretty clear um uh, it's spelled it's spelled out in here in which number is it number five no which number says that if we can't reach a consensus is that number seven could you, could you bring that up yes seven right. seven okay. so and it says if a consensus cannot be reached the final point value for each standard will be determined by a majority vote of the school board members present so we're going to try first, as it states, to try to reach a consensus that we can all live with. Um, and then if we can't, then the majority will rule on this. So it's pretty, it's pretty standard. It's pretty, I mean, the, the language is there. So um, if, if someone on the board doesn't like that language, they need to speak up. That's it. Okay, folks. Uh, final call for any other comment or question, but otherwise I'll say that this is what I, I see laid out now. Uh, in this two week period, reach out with more discussion or questions uh, with the committee members with phone, phone calls are wonderful. I think um, we do have a superintendent self-evaluation coming uh, that's due be before we meet next and I'll, I can talk offline with the superintendent about if he can still plan to be prepared uh, in accordance with this document to present it to us the night of our next meeting which would be in closed session because uh, it seems one way or another that step still has to take place. Dr. Spence do you care to weigh in on that specific point? Um, I will adhere to the timeline discussed with the governance committee. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I think that wraps up tonight's discussion. Thank you all for your thoughtful questions and for some very good comments. So now we will move on to committee reports. And we'll start with Mrs. Weems. Um, yes, um, we Zoomed with the Special Education Advisory Committee, SEAC, and kudos to them for, for putting on a great monthly meeting. Um, Dr. Pasternak was there and Tanya Sotomayor and the committee members, and we had a, um, some guests um, listening as well. Of course, they would like to have a um, seat at the table and a voice in regards to the recovery plan with vulnerable populations, um, such as those that are um, receiving special education services. And um, they also um, discuss the resource fair. As you know, it's every fall. So of course, the, um, you know, the questions are, are, are they gonna be able to have it? And so those are um, things that we'll just have to wait and see um, according to the governor and big um, events and everything. Um, also, they made, several people made comments that called in about how um, the links on our website page are a little bit difficult for, um, for families with um, special needs that need resources. And um, so, and just, and, and then everybody shared, you know, some, some great things that are happening and some challenges and they've just reached out to let um, folks know that if you are doing something with your child or if you're a caregiver with a child with special needs and 
and you've got questions or are doing something that's working great to please share that on the SEAC website page so that we can all get that information out. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Can I follow up, Ms. Weems? Did you get the impression, was there issue with accessing links or the links themselves were are difficult to navigate? Did yeah, they just, um, several folks um, were um, emailing in or, or texting in during the meeting and several folks said that they're there, but they're kind of um, difficult to access. It takes a while to find them. And so, and I will follow up with um, Ms. Allen about that also tomorrow. This, and I was gonna say, hopefully the staff was will be responsive to that and at least invest, look into that, right? Yeah, and, and, and probably Tanya did so as well, but I'll, I'll double up and follow up tomorrow. As well. And was there, did it seem like fair representation of actual board members present for the meeting, the electronic yes. meeting? Um, yes, they had, a, they had a good turnout. So it was very, yeah, kudos to them for, mm -hmm. for making it happen. It was great. I'm, I'm really happy to know that. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, other committees to report about upcoming meetings or meetings, meetings that just started taking place? Uh, Next governance meeting I can report is May 20th, one o'clock. And uh, the uh, PRC, this is Trinace, the PRC mm -hmm. meeting is um, the 14th at 1.30. Okay. And advisory councils, I had asked about them and I think that's a work in progress right now. Is that right, Ms. Linetti? We talked uh, talk with SEAC, they've obviously met, and then we're working individually with certain councils or committees that they need to have a meeting. They're making those determinations. And who are they? Con they work with their respective staff member, obviously, but we have such a central place where we can keep track of which advisory council councils are meeting. I don't know that we've done that yet. We're trying to move to a different model where the committees, our advice committees, the staff persons will be responsible for contacting them. So we're working on that model right now. But right now we're trying to get the staff members that work with each one of these committees to do that. SEAC reached out to me. I explained how to do it. They work with um, Ronnie, Tanya and how to do that. And then we're contacting the other committees. Not every committee has a, or a committee or board has a re reason to meet right now, so they don't necessarily have to rush forward and do anything. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, so it looks like we are um, at the point of con con concluding this formal meeting. I know I speak May on the- speak? Excuse me? May I speak? Oh, yes, who- I Oh, I like lost my- now. My screen went blank. I'm sorry, Mrs. Anderson. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, there is a webinar at 12 o'clock on Thursday, this coming Thursday from VSBA, where we will be listening. We won't be speaking, but we will be able to listen. And if you want to listen to the to the webinar, it's about it's called uh, free speech for me, but not for thee. It's about social uh, um, posting things on social media. So, um, but if you would like to listen to the webinar, um, you need to contact Diane and make sure that you have the, uh, have the link to be able to get into that. Okay, so piggybacking on that, uh, Ms. Um, Madam Clark, can you just remind the board, because it's my understanding you have registered us as a collective board, correct? No, ma'am. I register yourself so that you I can display it on a zoom meeting platform uh, so we'd only have one registration fee it's one registration per um, I mean one computer per registration right I However, said I did, want, I did want to note that if you are unable to watch the webinar as a, a registered attendee the SBA will provide us a recording of the webinar to be shown later at, or available to all of our board members later to be viewed at their own convenience Thank you, and that is what I meant. A single fee was paid for the benefit of all of us. And, and uh, so I would echo, I encourage everybody either live or through archive 
and you did send a link to us, correct, Diane? Miss? Yes, yes, ma'am. I did send uh, the link. Um, actually, it's not an individualized link. It's just a viewing link because you don't have the opportunity to discuss. So it is open for the board members to view. That link has been sent out. And again, I will have the recording available after the conclusion. Okay. And I'll just ask my colleagues if anybody has trouble locating that contact uh, myself or Miss Alexander will resend it to you. All right, then. Um, with that, again, we, we to our public, everybody stay healthy and well. Uh, thank and uh, we are here to support you in any way. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.